Suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole house where they were sitting, and it appeared unto them cloven tongues like fire that sat upon their heads. Hi, I'm Pastor Victoria Fury. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. So glad that you're tuning in with these programs and learning the Word of God. I've been doing a series on prayer all summer. I'm going to continue today on prayer. If you have a Bible there, I'd love for you to join me. And I'd like to pray for the viewing audience. Father, thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit's ministry upon this program today the ministry of your wisdom and grace and the revelation of the Son of God to enter their hearts by the Holy Spirit. I thank you for illuminating the eyes of their understanding that they know and understand the great hope of your calling to their lives, Father, in Jesus' name. I'd like for you to open up to the First Timothy chapter 2. Apostle Paul is exhorting Timothy, his son in the faith that he trained, and other believers. He says, I exhort therefore that first of all, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Notice, he said, all men. Verse 2, for kings and for all those that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So as a believer in Jesus Christ, we pray for our president, our vice president, their cabinet, the House, the Senate, the Congress, the representatives, the Supreme Court judges, upon our police force, our law enforcement, our military, our homeland security, the borders of the United States, upon our governors, upon those that represent our states and our mayors. For this is good and acceptable before God our Savior. The Bible says in verse 3, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. So when you pray for those in authority, you're going to pray in line with the Word of God. You're going to pray for protection upon their life. You're going to pray for the wisdom and the fear of God to be upon their lives and the instructions of the Holy Spirit to be in their heart. See, the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. The fear of God, men depart from evil. So God will raise up leaders, and he'll take down leaders. And if there's corrupt government, God sees it all, and he will remove leaders. He'll remove leaders that have manipulated and controlled. He'll remove them. And he will raise up new leadership. It's so important to know the Word of God and pray in line with the Word of God. Our nation was found on godly principles. And our Constitution and Bill of Rights needs to be protected. It needs to be protected. Our children need to be protected. There shall, there shall not be any violence in schools. Children should have a place of safety to go to when they go to school. Parents should have that assurance that their child is being taken care of well, that their children are being protected. It's so important to uphold the Word of God, 
to uphold the integrity of the gospel, to uphold the Constitution of the United States. When you pray in line with God's word, it's good and acceptable before God our Savior. And it says in verse 4, who will have all men to be saved? Notice that. It's the will of God for all men to be saved. The Bible says, Let the wicked forsake their way, the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let them return unto the Lord, and he will abundantly pardon. who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. The truth is only in Jesus Christ the Lord. There is no other God but the Lord Jesus Christ. He came forth from the Father into this world. It was prophesied through the prophet Isaiah 7.14, The Lord himself shall give you a sign a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel. Jesus is the son of the highest. He is the redeemer of your soul. He is the redeemer of the nation of Israel. He is the one that was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. He was made sin for you at the cross who knew no sin to make you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There is not one righteous person upon the earth, no, not one, because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin was death. Spiritual separation resulted in a physical death and judgment. But Jesus conquered sin and death at the cross. His victory over the dominion of sin, his victory was won at the cross. He spoiled principalities and powers. He made a public display of them at the cross. God the Father raised him from the dead on the third day, and he appeared to his apostles and disciples for 40 days before he ascended to the Father. They were eyewitnesses of his ministry, eyewitnesses of his crucifixion, eyewitnesses of his resurrection, eyewitnesses of his ministry, of him ministering the kingdom of God for that 40-day period before he ascended to the Father. They watched him ascend to the Father. That's found in Acts chapter 2. The angels of the Lord said the same way you see him ascending is the same way he's coming back. When he comes back, he comes back with a shout of an archangel and the trump of God. The dead in Christ will rise first. Those that are alive will be caught up together with the Lord. When he comes back, he will take vengeance upon those that know not God nor obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says this gospel of the kingdom is to be preached in all the nations, then shall the end come. When he gave the commission to his apostles and disciples, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. If you're watching this program today and you are worshiping a false god, a graven image, that is an abomination before God Almighty. That false god, that false image is a demonic spirit. A demonic spirit. Jesus came to set you free. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. Why? He made that way through the cross. He had the power to lay his body upon that cross and take it up again. He shed innocent holy blood to blot out 
your iniquities and your transgressions. It says through the prophet Isaiah, he was wounded for your transgressions, he was bruised for your iniquities, the chastisement of his peace was upon you, and by his stripes you are healed. You are healed. He came for you spirit, soul, and physical body. Hallelujah. We're going to continue in 1 Timothy chapter 2. In verse 4, who will have all men to be saved, come to the knowledge of the truth. So when we're praying for those in authority, we're praying for all men that it's good and acceptable before God. He's not willing for any to perish, but to come to a repent of heart before him. Because godly sorrow worketh a repent of heart. Because the Lord knows those that are his. And those that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So your faith can't be in a church name. Because when you come to Christ, he takes you out of darkness into this marvelous light. He takes you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. So you're a church cannot save your soul. There's no one on the earth that can save you. A created being can't save you. You were created by God, but you can't save your soul. It's the Creator, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who became the Son of Man, who is God manifested in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, Preach to the Gentile nations. He is the Holy Lamb of God that was slain for, the, for your sins. He is the author of eternal life. There is in him is life, and that life was the light of man. The Bible says that this gospel is to be preached. This gospel is the glad tidings. This gospel is the good news. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you're complete in him as a believer who is the head of all principality and power. You're complete in him. Because what he did was a perfect, holy, redemption, sacrifice for your soul. The Bible says all the souls are mine, but the soul that sinneth, it shall die. You cannot save yourself from your sins. Impossible, because you're a created being. Only Jesus can save your soul. How do you get saved? You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You believe in his holy sacrifice. You believe in the blood that he shed for you was innocent, holy blood. His death brought reconciliation for your soul unto the Father of glory. He's the one that wipes out your sin. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes it from you. And he puts inside you the indwelling spirit of Christ. You become his child by faith in Jesus Christ. You don't become his child by any other person, any other false god. You become his child by faith in Christ. It's faith in what he accomplished, not what you have accomplished. You can't earn eternal life. You cannot merit eternal life. The Bible says, by his grace, you're saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. We'll continue on in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Where there is, verse 5, where there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 6, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am 
ordained a preacher, this is Apostle Paul, an apostle, an apostle is one sent by God on a mission. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Jesus' blood speaks of his mercy for your soul. His blood cried out mercy. See, Abel's blood cried out vengeance because his brother Cain killed Abel. But Jesus' blood cries out mercy for your soul. God's mercy extends to thousands of generations, to those that love him and keep his commandments. The greatest commandment that God has given us is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, to love thy neighbor as thyself. That fulfills all the commandments. So when you're going to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you've got to be regenerated inside, a new spirit within you. Because in and of yourself, you cannot love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength if you're a non-believer. But when you believe in Jesus Christ, who paid the ultimate sacrifice for your sins, to deliver your life from destruction, to deliver your life from the grave, and you put faith in his blood, because his blood justifies you unto the Father. He justifies you, declaring you innocent of all charges. He's the justifier of the unjust. The Bible says we were all under sin, we were all transgressors. He made intercession for your transgression at the, before he went to the cross. And he's your deliverer. You can't deliver your own soul. It's only Christ Jesus that can deliver you. The Ten Commandments show the holy law. If you broke one commandment, you're guilty of all. The Ten Commandments cannot impart righteousness to you. Jesus fulfilled the law and the prophets. He is the one that imparts, imputes his righteousness to those who believe. It's faith in him. It's not faith in a church name. It's faith in the person who is the mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. We'll go over there. Verse 14 of Hebrews chapter 4. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. And our profession is that he redeemed us by his own blood sacrifice at the cross. He redeemed us unto the Father of glory. That's our confession of faith. So when we pray, we pray to the Father in Jesus' name because Jesus' name is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee bows in the heaven and every knee will bow upon the earth. Every knee will bow under the earth and declare Jesus Christ as Lord. We go to the Father in Jesus' name. So it says, seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. 
Verse 15, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. And it says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 5, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. In Christ was no sin. He is the eternal Son of God, became the Son of Man. Co-equal with the Father. It says in verse 16 of Hebrews chapter 4, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne room of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find help in the time of need. So at the throne of grace, is where we obtain his mercy and his help in the time of need. We go to our great Savior. We go to our Father of heaven. He said when he was risen from the dead, I go to my Father and your Father, to Mary. My God and your God. He brought redemption to the souls of mankind. The Bible says, whosoever shall call, you're a whosoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When you're on your last breath upon the earth, if you are a believer, absent from the body is present with the Lord. If you are a non-believer and you reject Jesus Christ in this life and never forsake your sin or repent before God or put your faith in what he accomplished for you at the cross, it's eternal damnation. The Bible says in Mark 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And those that believe, it says in Matthew, the last chapter, to go into all the world and preach the gospel, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the third person of the Godhead, He is God Almighty. He proceeds from the Father. He's called the Spirit of Truth. He leads and guides into all truth. He brings all things to your remembrance of the Word of God. He testifies of Jesus. He bears witness of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. He is all-knowing. He is full of wisdom. Wisdom comes from him. He is the great teacher. He imparts wisdom and grace and understanding. God's understanding is infinite understanding. God's wisdom is infinite wisdom. The knowledge of the Lord is infinite. He's called the spirit of might and the fear of the Lord. When the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the fear of God, comes upon a person, they will be convicted of their sin and the darkness of their heart. He will begin to show you your own heart. If it's wicked, he will show you how wicked it is. If there's no forsaking of sin and no repentance in your heart, there's no fear of God before you. 
That's why there's no changes in a person because there's no fear of God because the word of God states the fear of God men turn away from evil. That's the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 24 And this man, talking about Jesus, because, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood, whereof he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for you. He ever liveth to make intercession for you. He intercedes for your soul. He ever sat down at the right hand of the Father. He purged our sins. God the Father exalted him all power has been given unto Jesus Christ in the heavens and upon the earth. All power has been given unto him. All power belongs unto God. Hallelujah. We're going to go into the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. The Bible says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That's the word of the Lord for you today. To give thanks unto God. This can be the greatest day in your life by surrendering your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for watching. Times of refreshing. God bless you. Thank you. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.